Okay, with that, I'm going to turn it over to Brock. And Brock's going to run through, again, like, how do you actually get started? Hands-on keyboard. If you want right now, if you're not already in a test drive, you can do that. You can follow along. Um, it's going to be a ride, and he'll talk you through some of the features that are enabling that as he goes. Thanks, Brock. Awesome. Hey, everyone. Thanks for having me here today. So I'm going to start off with just showing you Dremu Cloud as a whole. And then I'll jump into test drive so you can understand what test drive offers you. So this is Dremu Cloud. For you not familiar with this, it's easy. You Once you set up uh, an organization and sign up for Dremu Cloud, you'll be presented with something very similar to this view. This is our data set view. When you first log in, you'll see a blank space for spaces and blank sources. You can easily start adding objects to Dremio by clicking the plus source button. And this will give you the option here to add different sources. You can see we have different options around data as codes. You can add an Arctic catalog, start with Arctic right away today. If you already have existing data in Glue or S3, you can easily just add those. And now you have your data lakes available for you. And databases and data warehouses, you can easily add any of these sources by just clicking on them, going through, filling out your credentials and saving that. One of the great things about this is you have full permissions on everything in Dremio. So you can set what permissions every user has, or within Dremio, we also have the ability to set roles. Those roles can be pulled in through different aspects using LDAP, single sign-on. Um, we have skim support, Octa support as well. So you can pull in all those roles, all those privileges from existing um, authorization authentication mechanisms that you have today and allow them to filter in here for you to set permissions on who can access what objects. Again, that can be done on anything within Dremio. So you see here, I have these spaces. They're like logical grouping and organization of data sets within Dremio. So I have these spaces and in these spaces, I can set who has permissions to do what in those spaces. And that's a hierarchical type permissions. So I go down to every object within Dremio. In this space, particularly that we're looking at now, I actually have some folders for organization. But before I dive too much into this space, I right into this view here, uh, just want to show you guys that we do have a couple of different things here on the left-hand side. What we're seeing now is the data set view. It'll allow you to browse data sets and manipulate the D DML on those data sets. We also have a SQL runner view that will show you the actual SQL, and you can start building out your own queries from scratch here. You can, inside this view, do things like create scripts and save those scripts and share them with other users as well. Then we have this jobs view that shows you every job that's ran within Dremio. If you're an admin, you see everything. If you're a user without admin permissions, you only see your queries. So here I can see everything. I'm an admin, so I can see all those things. The last thing is the project settings. I'll hit on that a little bit later. But back here inside this view, I want to do something like actually start working with some data. I want to pull up this business space. I'm going to go into the transportation folder, and I'm going to open up New York to, uh, Trips data set. If I open this up, you'll see here, it shows me the DDL for this. So this is, uh, you know, I can do a quick run on it and see the data and just get a brief little preview of what that looks like. There's a million records just came back real quick, just to give me an idea with what this data is. Now, this is a, a data set with 1 billion records. We're going to only show you a subset of that in the web UI because you don't, no one can really work with a billion records in the UI, really millions more than enough. I can look at it and get an idea of what this data is. If I'm going to start doing some calculations on top of that, Dremio will process the full data set to do all your calculations. But the great thing about this is I could start working with this and pull it somewhere else. But before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and look at a couple different tabs we have here. We have this nice catalog tab that lets you see you know, some information, wiki information that we've created for this data set. You can edit any data set's wiki page and add anything like text, graphics, and links, and more information about what this is. In fact, we have users today that automatically populate this through our uh, REST API. So if you have a external data catalog and you want to populate that information, you can do that. This next tab here is our data lineage tab. We call it the graph tab. And this shows you where this data set's being used and what data sets it is using. So in this data set, you can see it's coming from an S3 source. And as we traverse backwards, you can actually click on it and traverse backwards to see the parent and the parent's parent. So this gives you a really great idea of where is this data really coming to and from. And you can see we have a lot of uh, descendants using these data sets everywhere. But ultimately, it's coming from this physical data set. You can tell it's a physical data set because it's purple, and it's a view if it's this green color. So we can see here that's a physical data set. That is the raw, untouched data set. Everything on top of it is just a view that we're going to work with. The last tab is our Reflections tab. I'm not going to jump into the Reflections tab yet. I'll show you that a little bit later. So coming out here into the TRIPS data set, 
If I highlight this, I can easily go to the SQL the query data set view, and this will take us into the SQL editor. There's a couple different things we can do in here. We can just run it and get an idea of what the data looks like. We can pull us out into other tools as well. We can even do calculations on this. Maybe when I do a quick little calculation, maybe I want to do um, a calculation of, let's just find the distance here. And maybe when I change this over to a calculated field, I want to go ahead and just do times like 1.6 to give me some kilometers. And I'm going to keep both fields and I'm just going to click apply. So now Jeremy is going to apply that. And I can see I have both the, the distance to MI and distance to kilometers. And that just gives me a great way of, hey, I want to keep both of those. I want to have them both for my analysis. I can save this then as another view. I'm just going to save my own, my own personal space. I'm just going to call it NYC trips. Agree. Just make sure there's nothing else there. All right. So now that I click save, you'll see I have this couple buttons that pop up, a Tableau and Power BI button. Any BI tool can really connect to Tremio. We have these native integrations with Tableau and PI, uh, Power BI from our web uh, UI. You can just click it. It's going to download a file that's it's just a link to Dremio. I'm going to go ahead and open that up. And when that opens up, I'm going to switch over to Tableau. So we're just authenticating with single sign-on into Tableau, so you don't have to fill in your credentials in both places. Now, Tableau is going to connect and run every query in here directly against Dremio. We're not going to use cubes or extracts or anything like that matter. So if I go ahead and do a full count on all this data, I just want to see how many records I got. You can see Dremio came back at the speed of thought. It was so quick, we got a billion records. Now, I want to slice and dice this data. Let's look at it by the pickup date. I want to quickly see what does that look like. And without waiting for the window to spin and get this information back, I was able to quickly see how many riders per day, or per year in this case, came back. And I can even drill into this data without using any kind of cubes or extracts, I can get down to uh, more, uh, more granular levels of this data. In fact, if you have a cube or extract, you might not be able to do that because those cubes and extracts become too large. You can see how quick that was. I can break down to the year month level. In fact, if I really want to, I can go to the day level. You cannot do that today with most tools and get this kind of performance. So let's just back this up a little bit. Let's look at the month level. And let's add some other uh, measures to this. Let's go ahead and look at some things like maybe the tip amount and find out, you know, has a tip amount changed throughout the year? Um, we'll go ahead and do an average. All right. It's got, it goes up a little bit towards the end of the year. People get a little, during the holidays, feeling a little better and giving, you know, bigger tips. Well, let's see, has a fair amount affected that? Maybe I want to see that as well. So it's going to just change that to an average as well. So you can quickly do this analysis. You can see, okay, well, actually the fair amount's gone up. That might be the reason why the fair has gone up, the tips have gone up and percentage wise. Uh, so this just gives you a really quick, easy, fast way to build these dashboards, apply anything you want to do with inside them. And then at the end of the day, you can share it to the other users and have that access to that data. Going back over to Dremio, let me just switch over here. Going back over here to Dremio, you can see that we have in the jobs page, all these queries, this all came directly from Tableau and ran directly in Dremio. If I open up one of these queries, you'll see the query that was submitted, some information about the job and how fast it ran. But something really important here is how do we get this information so fast, the billion records of data back? Well, we are able to do that via reflections. Reflections are an acceleration technique within Dremio that give you great performance on your data sets, even if they're very large data sets. In this case, an aggregate reflection is like an index on your data. And it's going through and indexes that data automatically for you, and it'll keep it up to date for you. So whenever you run a query against any data set that has this reflection within its query path, Dremio does automatic substitution, meaning no user queries a reflection directly. This happens automatically for them. So as a user, all I know is my performance is great. That's all I care about. So coming back over here, I know we touched base, you know, Reed had mentioned earlier, you know, being able to join data between different data sources. So it's very easy to do that in Dremio. I have this Postgres database down here, and I have some data in S3. I'm going to go ahead, and I'm going to go to this query editor. I'm going to go ahead and go from my business layer, transportation, 
I'm going to just do a select var from this, pull over this here, and then I'm just going to run that. Again, we've seen this before as the data set. Well, you could either, if you're you know SQL savvy, you might want to come in and just type in the SQL. I can always do use the UI, click the join button, browse down to the Postgres database, the public. I'm going to grab some weather data, and it'll give me this little preview of what that looks like. I Yep, that looks like what I want. Just go ahead and click the next button, drag over the pickup date and the date here as well. And now I'm going to hit apply. This will generate the query for me, so I don't have to go and write it myself. And if I hit the run button, I will get some information back to see what does this really look like? And I should be able to then act on that data, save it and share it with other users. Again, if I scroll over, I should be able to see that join. So you can see there, there's the two dates. I now have the weather data and I have the data from the New York City Trips data set. Again, I can save this view. I can save my space, just NYC weather. And now I have a data set I can then go and use in any other tool. In fact, I can pull this back out in the Tableau and do some analysis there as well if I want to. So it just makes it very easy to share this, create data sets, join between different sources and get performance on that. It's one of the other cool things here at the top. Again, we mentioned the graph tab. By clicking the graph tab, I can see both those data sets in that data lineage. I can see one's coming from Postgres and one's coming from uh, S3. So I know that where the data is coming to and from. If I had more sources in here joined together, you'd see all of them as well. Or if they're just a bunch of S3 sources, you see a bunch of S3 tables. All right, so I touched base a little bit on permissions. I wanna kind of jump into just a little bit about how we can do fine grain access control. So within Dremio, if I go to the security layer and I have this employees table, this is just a view that has some information in it and I click run. I can see here only three records. This has a lot more than three records. The, and you can notice that the social security number, the credit card number, and the credit card code, they have some kind of masking done to them. And it makes it so I can't see the information in those columns. Uh, the way this is being done is not through something being stored inside of a view, but rather through our native policies. If I go in here, I can show you what those look like. I have a couple UDF functions that define how we're going to do some of this masking. So I have a protect social security number masking that happens. And what it's doing is it's looking at the user running the query. If it's you know the gnarly uh, Dremio.com or the user Dremio, or if they are a member of the role accounting, then they can see the full social security number. Otherwise, they're going to see what I see, which is that masked out number. Something very similar for the credit card code. And again, something very similar for the, um, I'm sorry, I have two different ones for credit card code. But yeah, something very similar for that credit card code. And then lastly, I do, once you've done this, you just apply the masking policy to the data set, and that will then make sure that the policy gets applied. So anyone that runs a query against the data set will always have this. And you can reuse those UDFs on any data set within Dremio. So you could sit there, create that same policy, and go out there and just apply it everywhere on everything that has a screen number or whatever you need to do. It makes it very easy and very reusable within the environment. One of the great things is that masking, or sorry, the um, row level policy can be applied as well the same way. And you can do it on the base tables. That way, anyone coming in is going to automatically, even at the base table level, have those filters applied. So if there's any PII you don't want to share it with anyone, you can apply it right away. Here's how you would do it with a um, row level policy. You just look at the query user and you match it up with some kind of column you want to filter on. So maybe it's department ID is what I'm doing here. And we're filtering that department ID. And then you apply that policy as well. Once it's done, you'll be able to, again, like you saw before, you select from that table and you can see that I'm only seeing three records. And this actually has a lot more than three records in it. This data set has, um, if I go back into the Postgres system, I can see in here the employees table. I go to the raw table because I have permissions in the raw table. It has many more than that, uh, has 107 records in there. So you can see all that information if you went to the base table because there are no policies being applied on the base table. All right. So how do you guys get started today? I'm going to show you real quick um, how you can test out some of Dremio's functionalities without using a credit card, without doing anything. You can just sign up on our website and do Dremio test drive. So how do you do that? Go to Dremio.com. You'll see up here in the top, we have this button that says Start Test Drive. All you got to do is go in here, fill in some information, your first name, your last name, your email.
and I'm just going to click sign up. So this will then send me an email that I will then be able to log in. You can just click the open Gmail button. I'm going to go over here. I'm going to see if that got sent. You'll see here that you were invited by Gnarly Narwhal. You can click the join organization button and it'll take you over here. You can create a password, You, if, however you want to set up the sign in. I'm just going to click the login with Google real quick and click that. And then once I'm in, I will now have access to the environment. And it's going to pop up here and we can go ahead and click. It will give you an overlay, which I already dismissed, that will show you, here's how you can get started today. And I'll walk you through the process of creating your own view, querying the data sets like I did. So going into a data set, uh, querying that, running uh, the information out of there and quickly see you know the same thing I just did with you. It's gonna be a very read-only experience, but it'll let you see the information. Look at the catalog view. You can see the catalog view in there. You'll be able to see the graph and data lineage in there as well. Um, and it'll let you create and save your own object inside your own space here. You won't have the option to add sources in the test drive or add spaces. Uh, but once you've gotten familiar with the environment and you really think, hey, I'm ready to go on and set up my own Dremio Cloud instance, you can go back to our Dremio.com and sign up for Dremio Cloud at that point. All right. Thanks, everyone. I'll hand it back over to Reed here.